you know, Jennifer Klein's post-game interview was pretty emotional because it was far and away the best result of the season and one that was well-earned and showed, you know, not only the potential of this team, but maybe what could have been, Brian, if things had gone a little differently uh, for the Wolverines this year. Someone who did not play in that Thursday match, Danny Wolf. She gets us going here for the Wolverines. They're in the white, Indiana in the reds, the regular season finale between these two programs. When you talk about trying to kind of get some momentum going into the offseason. A win for Michigan, they'd go above 500 overall. A win for Indiana, and yeah, they'd come up with their first victory in Big Ten play. They are 2-7-7. Seven and seven. The problem has been they have not been able to score. Just a scoring performance in three matches this season. Ten total goals. Yeah, it's not what... It's not what you're looking for as a program, and I think it's especially frustrating in a year when your defense shows that it can keep you in games. You know, we talked about before the broadcast started that, you know, the Hoosiers began the season with eight consecutive clean sheets due in large part to Gerstenberg and goal. And so when you have that kind of defense, it makes you think, all right, we've got a chance in any game. And so when you're just not able to put it in the goal, it's so frustrating for players and coaches alike. Indiana with a chance. But some miscommunication there. Nowhere to go on that pass from Paige Weber, the senior, also a Michigan native. And there is the aforementioned Izzy Nino, who had to wait her turn patiently behind four-year starter Hillary Beal. Came in with just 10 career starts. This her 16th, 6-6-3 six, six, on the season in her final time to don, well, the light blue along with the maze here in goal for Michigan. You know, one of the keys for Michigan in that comeback against Rutgers the other night was a change in formation that they, you know, had used for maybe the last two or three games, but it's not what they had gone through or gone for most of the season. We've talked a lot about the 4-3-3 that Jennifer Klein likes to play, but they actually changed to three in the back and went with a wing back system against Rutgers, and it really worked out for them. So I kind of thought we would see that again today, but Klein has reverted to her 4-3-3, and Indiana sticks with its traditional 4-4-2 with a diamond in midfield. So those are the kind of the formations that we're looking at here. And, uh, you know, for anybody that watched that game against Rutgers uh, the other night, you know, Avery Coletta played the game of her life, the game of the season by far for her. You know, I've been critical of her at times this season because the potential is there, the talent is there. She hadn't put it all together, but she had an unbelievable game uh, against Rutgers and, and was the best player on the field in my eyes. Especially that incredible second half for Michigan. Three goals after being in an incredible, Incredible scoring drought. Wolverines had not scored in their previous eight matches except for Meredith Hawkinson. Two goals, one in two matches a couple of weeks back. And it came from a pretty unexpected scorer and Jenna Lang with two of the goals. Her only other goal came back on September the 1st, that tough loss to Iowa State. That one deflects off Anaya Lee. Michigan able to save the corner and now they have a goal kick coming up for Izzy Nino but that's certainly some optimism because around this Michigan program there's a lot of freshmen now soon to be sophomores that Jennifer Klein and company really like and well Jenna Lang one of those who got a big time confidence boost going into this match and then the offseason no question and you know one of her goals was a, a beautiful headed goal that was just kind of flicked on into the corner. It looks like we might have an opportunity here, Brian. Sammy Woods was out there, but Megan Wampler was able to head it away at least for a moment. Indiana trying to secure strong possession there. And a nice job by Camille Ham to force a throw in for Indiana. Just to finish the point on Lang, you know, I saw a little post game interview clip with her, and she talked about how, you know, the way she approaches her role coming off the bench is that she needs to bring energy and whether she needs to match the energy that's on the field if Michigan is playing really well then fine she can do that or if the team is down a little bit she takes it upon herself to kind of pump them up and get things going back to where the coaching staff wants that energy to be and you know for a young player to have that mindset and also be willing to approach coming off the bench in that regard it's exactly what you want to see from younger players that are trying to crack into the starting lineup for more minutes and case in point Lang in that match on Thursday she checked in the second half in the 71st minute. She had a shot that was blocked away one minute later, and then her goals came at the 78th 
and the 80th minutes. So you want to talk about adding some energy. That was very much the case from Lang. There's some energy from Tamiya Tolbert to get away a potential Indiana surge. And Tolbert's 20th birthday here this afternoon. And she played really well against Rutgers. Uh, also, Brian anchoring that back line along with Margot Ridgeway. There is Ridgeway. Didn't get enough on that chip pass. Here come the Hoosiers with Natasha Kim. Now Sophia Black, a squibber. That would have been wide of the mark, but is he Nino able to secure it? A little bit more than five minutes in, the first legitimate chance for either side was a modest one for the Hoosiers. Yeah, Black is playing in that center attacking mid roll. That would be the top or the top point of that diamond, if you can picture it in your mind. So she's the player that's going to be trying to link up with the forwards or sending through balls if she can, or if the defense gives her some space, you know, lining up and taking a hit, as we saw there. Such an odd backdrop to this match from a weather standpoint. Regular season finale. And you see Anaya League will throw it in for Michigan with some of the leaves on the ground, yet mid-70s for the temperature here in late August in southeast Michigan. That does not happen very much. Yeah, I'm not complaining up here with the windows open in the press box. It is a delightful day uh, for the end of this regular season. One of those days that I'm sure makes these two teams upset that they're unable to continue because when you get into the postseason, the eight-team Big Ten tournament, it's always a blast. Michigan, of course, won it last season. Greens will have a set, set piece here with Sarah Bridenstine just outside of that touch line. Her set piece delivery was huge in that game against Rutgers. She consistently put balls into dangerous areas and showed that she can deliver into the right spots. And this looks like another good one here. Headed out of there by Indiana's Natasha Kim. Michigan unable to generate a shot attempt on what was a pretty darn good uh, service there from Bridenstine. Seven minutes in. Indiana has the match's lone shot. Now Natasha Kim tries to accelerate. Pushes it ahead to Jordan Levy, the sophomore. Now a throw in coming up for Indiana. Elena Kalen surveying the scene, trying to find Kim. Some tussling down near the corner. This is a tough spot here. It's squirming around. Might have hit off the post. Still loose. Michigan trying to get it away, and they do while also preventing a corner. Boy, Nino was in front of the ball at one point, and Michigan still trying to get it out of this last third. Dangerous spot. Wolverines seem to have secured possession here. That was a really frantic sequence in the box there. It was like a pinball between Izzy Nino and Paige Weber and the Michigan center backs that were there. And at one point it looked like Nino had control of it, but then it lost out of her hands or it dropped out of her hands. Excuse me. Man, Michigan was fortunate to get away with that one. Uh, not only to, to prevent the goal, but like you said, Brian, not conceding a corner kick and giving up another opportunity. You know, danger averted there. But again, for an Indiana team that doesn't score goals very often, I guess you're excited that that's a chance, but another missed opportunity that just doesn't go in the net for this team. Yeah, Indiana, three matches this season with goals. They beat Indiana State back on September the 1st, 3 nil. Non-Division one try, they knocked them off 5 nil back on the 14th of September. And then a draw with Purdue last Sunday, 2-2. Tron, wasn't that a movie? <laughs> Trine, not oh. Tron. Sorry. I think a few more people know Tron than Trine, though. Can't say I'm up on my non-Division <laughs> One soccer teams. There's Mazer leaving it up for Olivia Rush, the freshman from Troy, Michigan. Mazer has it back. Indiana with two shots. They didn't get an official shot on that last sequence. It was not on goal. And nothing doing there here for the Hoosiers. When I had a chance to watch the Hoosiers on film, you know, I noticed that the vast majority of their attacks come down the wings. They really like to try and get the ball wide. And I think 
part of that is because of the shape that they're playing in midfield with the diamond, it, it doesn't necessarily lend itself to a ton of possession in midfield. And, and I think if you were to point to one weakness for this team, it would be that there are moments where they can't really connect well in the midfield. Their attacking players look solid at times, make the right runs, get into dangerous opportunities. But in terms of controlled, possessed build-up play, there, there just isn't a ton of it. And I think the formation that the Hoosiers choose to play under Van Bennekom is, is part of that reason. Ten minutes into this one, Michigan and Indiana, both teams playing out the string here in this regular season. Neither will qualify for a Big Ten tournament that the Wolverines won last season. Izzy Nino quickly to trigger it away. In goal for her Michigan career finale. Wolverines looking to generate their first true offensive opportunity. Meredith Hawkinson providing some pressure there against a pretty good player in Alana Kalin. Nice sliding effort there by Michigan's Emily Lacey. Doesn't generate anything, but after Indiana, I think, controlled those first eight, nine minutes of the match, Michigan trying to sway the momentum a little bit. Yeah, it was really nicely read by Lacey there to be able to to see the pass ahead of time slide in without going through the player and committing a foul and dispossessing cleanly. You wonder with nothing on the line here other than one more match with your teammates with what a lot of these players on both sides call their second family. You wonder if maybe a more loose approach could open things up for both these clubs that have struggled offensively this season. Well, you know, it's interesting you say that, Brian. You know, I'm, I'm a huge fan of the, the English Premier League and I watch all the time and and there's this you know, sort of unwritten rule that the last weekend of the season, when all the games kick off simultaneously, there's goals all over the place. And it's because teams are a little more reckless, players are willing to go for it, there's no real repercussions unless you're fighting for a particular spot. So yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if we, if we saw some fireworks at some point today. That quick Kalen throw in, stolen away. Avery Coletta, who shined for the Wolverines in the win over Rutgers on Thursday able to shoot away and now a foul on Indiana the first whistle of the match it's good to see Anaya League back out there as well she's missed a little bit of time and through injury in this latter part of the season and you know for a true freshman we talked about her a lot playing a starting role uh, in the Big Ten just gaining unbelievable experience as a, as a freshman and, and so she'll come into next season not only with a lot of minutes under her belt but with a lot of confidence that she can perform at this level and that the coaching staff trusts in what she can do. Yeah, and league, someone to build around for this Michigan program. Remember, the last time she played before today was that home match against Northwestern. Only played 22 minutes, a little bit banged up, which cost her the last couple of matches. And that was a big swing point in the match. Wolverines were less than two minutes away from going into half, all square at nil-nil. Western got a late first half goal and really dominated the second half, winning three to nil. Here, we're about 13 minutes in. Indiana with the matches two shots. Wolverines, only one true chance inside the box on a service from Sarah Bridenstine that didn't generate anything. Now there's a long pass out towards Sammy Woods, the Wolverines' leading goal scorer. She finds Farkas just outside the box, lets it rip. Never had a really good clean look at it. It was off to the right, but it does go as Michigan's first shot. I'm very curious to see how some of these Big Ten teams will play in the NCAA tournament, Brian, because there have been four to five, sometimes even six teams around the top 25 or receiving votes in the polls. And, and so to some extent, it becomes a situation where the top of the league is a little bit cannibalistic, where they're just beating each other. And so, you know, how good is Michigan State or Northwestern or Rutgers or Ohio State, teams that are probably going to be in the NCAA tournament regardless of what happens in the conference tournament? And so I, I do think it's a pretty strong league, but how do they stack up against schools from the SEC or the Pac-12, which are, you know, the two primary leagues that, that contenders come from, the ACC as well? Um, I'm really curious to see because we've seen some talented teams this year, and I think there's a potential for a Big Ten team or two to make a run, especially Michigan State. Yeah, regular season champions, the Spartans clinching earlier this week. Heck of an ascent for the Spartans over the last few years. Yeah, only one loss this season, Brian. 
13, 1, and 3 going into this weekend. Foul here on Michigan, so Indiana will have it around the halfway line. Tail end of the 15th minute. Wolverines and Hoosiers both concluding their seasons here this afternoon. A lot of contact there. Hoosiers maintain possession. Coil. Here's a deflection by Danny Wolf up into the air. And it squirms its way to Bridenstein. Tried to find Ridgeway. She simply has to boot it to force a throw in. That one was dangerously close to a potential corner. And the Hoosiers have a throw in pretty close, prompting the first couple of substitutions of the match. Sydney Mazur and Jordan Levy exit. Ava Akia will. Enter. I think we're going to see a long throw here, Brian. And this is Natasha Kim. Check that. Camille Ham will let it fly. Yeah, that's my fault, Brian. I got the numbers mixed up when I was telling you about the big throw before the game. Oh, what a hit. And oh, what a save. It's by Nino. How did she come up with anything on that? It was the difference between a goal and still a nil-nil game. No question. I mean, that was dipping right into the top of the net. Uh, it was struck beautifully off the half volley, and I don't know if anybody expected that shot to come from that position, but Nino with a great tip up off the bar and then the composure to go and grab the rebound. Just a tremendous save there, Brian. And a huge difference from that other Indiana scoring chance where the ball was between Nino and the goal. Hoosiers on the push again. Here's a left-handed rip that's just a bit wide. Oh, a great opportunity there from Paige Weber. And Indiana, they are certainly making things interesting here with several chances against Nino and the Wolverines. Yeah, Weber was the standout player for me when I watched the Hoosiers on film. You know, she's really got a trick to her, whether it's a step over or a chop move, and she loves to try and take shots early, as we saw there. She's a player who coming into today was credited with three expected goals but only one goal on the season one actual goal so that shows you she's getting into dangerous areas just hasn't been able to capitalize to the rate that you would expect based on where those shots are coming from but a very very tricky player up top that the Wolverines will have to deal with into the 18th minute still nil nil Michigan and Indiana on a beautiful day in Ann Arbor out shooting the Wolverines five to one. Throwing for Elena Kalen here. Coletta. Nice work for Michigan in order to retrieve possession. And now she has it. Wolverines reverse field a little bit here. Sammy Woods surveys. Gives it over to Anaya League, the talented freshman. Now Woods, who Michigan's issues scoring have coincided with her having some trouble as of late. Still tied for seventh in the Big Ten in goals with seven, but she hasn't found the net since September 11th. No goals in Big Ten play. And that's why Michigan is not going to be participating in that Big Ten tournament next week. Yeah, and I mean, you don't want to be too critical of any individual player, but let's be honest, it's it's in Big Ten play when the goals count. You know, you can rack up as many as you want against Central Michigan, against whoever comes in here in the non-conference, but if you can't do it against the teams that are the best that on your schedule, the ones that are going to dictate whether or not you get to the Big Ten tournament or the NCAA tournament, that's a problem, and that's something Jennifer Klein will have to clean up. Ava Keel with the steal. Tried to cross it from one side of the box to the other. That one's booted out by... Elena Kalen, and Michigan dodges a turnover in that Indiana offensive third. Indiana has dictated the terms throughout much of this first half, which is almost 20 minutes old. I would agree, Brian, and, and I'm guessing that Jennifer Klein is probably not too pleased. You know, the, the intensity that Michigan played with in the second half against Rutgers was, I mean, it was just... It was incredible to watch, to be honest. I mean, I had not seen this team play like that all season. 
and we're not seeing it here to carry over game to game. Akil with a laser beam that Nino lunges for and shoes away. Sixth shot for Indiana. That one has some velocity behind it, but Nino's playing great in goal for the Wolverines. Yeah, that one might have drifted just wide of the post, but Izzy Nino had to be sure, so she dove, parried it away, and you could see when she got up, she was not happy with her defense, kind of really egging them on, encouraging them to close down and not allow these shots from distance, because right now, the Hoosiers are dictating play, as you noted, Brian. Sophia Black for the first corner of the game for either side here. 21st minute, nil-nil. That one arcs its way in. Tipped by Nino, couldn't catch it. Tolbert tried to chip it up into the air. Can she save a corner? No. Tolbert hoping for a birthday wish on number 20 for her to tiptoe and secure that possession. Instead, flip the field and Black will enter it in from the other side. For a team that has really struggled to score this season, and again, I say that, knowing that they haven't scored in this game either. But man, have they created some nice opportunities. It's really forced Izzy Nino to make some saves. Again, Black inserts it. A little bit more high arcing, that one headed wide. And it will be another corner here for Indiana, seesawing back and forth. Both have been pretty solid inserts here for Indiana. Keep an eye on the wind, too. It's really picking up, Brian, going from right to left as we see it. So it's going to try and blow the ball closer to Izzy Nino here. You really want to aim for that PK spot if you're Indiana. Will third time be the charm here for Black and the Hoosiers? A line drive. One hop bobble and then secure from Nino, who did great work in that sequence. She is playing very, very well, Brian, and it's it's really nice to see a goalkeeper play authoritatively. You know, that's a, a big difference between somebody who's capable of going and getting the ball and then wanting to go and get it and just going and doing it. It makes a huge difference, and it really sets the tone for a team. And something Jennifer Klein raved about with Nino coming into the season is that despite not being the starter, she worked, she practiced like the starter. Now Michigan just outside the box. Wolf, the senior, zips one in, headed out of there by Wampler, but it'll set up a corner kick for Michigan. You know, to some extent, while Michigan did end up whipping across, and that was a little bit of a wasted opportunity because Danielle Wolf did not peek over her shoulder when that ball was slotted through by Bridenstine. There was nobody near her. She could have turned inside instead of turning outside toward the sideline, and it's just those little things, not peeking over your shoulder, that make the difference between crossing the ball with four or five Indiana defenders in the box versus crossing it when there's only two or three if you go early. But here's another chance for Bridenstine to put in a set piece. No corners in the first 20 minutes or so of this match. Now the fourth in the last three, first for Michigan, Bridenstine. That's a rainmaker headed in there by Ridgeway, but it was wide of the mark, goal kick Indiana. Decent chance there though for the Wolverines. Yeah, ball flight probably a little bit higher than you would have wanted. It takes away some of the speed on it, so the person trying to head the ball has to generate most of the power as opposed to the power coming from the cross itself. And then the technique wasn't great there from Margot Ridgeway. Didn't look totally comfortable attacking that ball. But once again, in terms of where the set pieces are landing in the box, Bridenstein continues to give them opportunities. And that's why the coaching staff trusts her on just about every dead ball opportunity. Some changes for both teams here. For Indiana, Sarah Serta's first entry. The freshman replaces Anna Bennett. Michigan making two changes. Lily Farkas and Emily Layson out. Hannah Blake in the senior as is. One of the stars from that match on Thursday, Vicki Jones, who had her first career assist, played a season-high 68 minutes. The freshman from California, she's out there for the Wolverines. And the Hoosiers have another corner here, Brian. Indiana's fourth. And this time it'll be from the near side. Looks like it's Anna Bennett. It is Bennett. Flings it in. That one deflected near and a goal for Indiana. What a tumbling effort on the corner deflection. Sophia Black comes up with her first goal of the season and Indiana strikes first. Yeah, that was a really, really nice goal. And I know you might think, you know, why is that a nice goal? It just bobbled around, but it all starts with the cross and the one-time finish. It is so easy to try and volley across and just sky it over the net. But the technique to keep that low on the ground, which then caused the redirection in the bobble and allowed Black to poke it home. I mean, 
mean, that's just a huge momentum shift for the Hoosiers to be able to finally capitalize up on an opportunity, see the ball go into the back of the net, and sometimes it is like a free throw shooter or a three-point shooter in basketball, Brian. You just need to see it happen once, and then all of a sudden everybody loosens up, and I think that's a little bit of what happened with Michigan in that Rutgers game. They were down 2 nothing. Once they got the first, the momentum totally shifted, and now let's see if they can respond uh, now that they've been you know, punched in the gut, so to speak. And it was Natasha Kim who gets credit for it. A lot of commotion in there, but Black was around and some others as well. Natasha Kim with her second goal of the season. The freshman striking in the regular season finale. So, the Wolverines, they trailed 2-0 at halftime against Rutgers on Thursday here at home. They're hoping not to be down at the half here this afternoon. Yeah, and you don't, you don't want to go to the well too often. We've talked about Indiana scoring woes plenty of times already, but with two goals, she's now tied for the team lead. You know, I mean, that just kind of shows you this team has a couple players with two goals. Uh, but if, if you're leading the team or tied for the team lead with two and it's your season finale, that just kind of underscores the struggles that the Hoosiers have had. It's actually Ava Keel. They change it on the stat sheet as well. Indiana tiptoeing for another. Serta just outside the box. Negotiates a little differently. That one deflected a bit wide. Olivia Smith could not get there for the potential tip in. Izzy Nino challenged a ton in her final match. Yeah, that was a really nice save because I think she kind of saw that one late. It came through a couple of bodies, and it, I don't know if she was sure if it was going to get there without a deflection, and so she had to dive down to her left late to poke that away and did it with a plum. Here's Elena Kalin. So Indiana, now 10 shots in the match. They are racking them up here with less than 20 minutes to play first half. Already IU up 1-0. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a little cliche to say it, but if you look at the way this team has played the first 20, 25 minutes, there's no reason for them to be winless in Big Ten play. I mean, they are playing extremely well right now, creating lots of opportunities, and it doesn't look like a team that's winless in conference play. out of play by Sarah Serta, the freshman. One nil Indiana, final match of the season for both the Wolverines and the Hoosiers. Michigan getting outshot 10 to two. Can they generate something here? Trying to start things with Vicki Jones. Now out toward Margot Ridgeway, a fifth year senior playing in her final match in the Bays and Blue. The Wolverines will simply have to reset to someone who's been very busy this afternoon in Izzy Nito. Her goal allowed a bit ago. Now the 12th she surrendered this month had just eight in August and September. What a touch there by Woods to bring it down and then the chop to create an alley. Tried to curl it in toward Wolf. Indiana shoes it away. Here's a Nia Lee coming most of the way down. The Wolverines with a bit of a reset for Vicki Jones. She lost it ahead. Some contact there and a foul coming on Michigan's Meredith Hawkinson. I think they're going to get Hawkinson for offside there, Brian. She ah. came back from an offside position to challenge for that header. Regardless, whistle on Michigan here. Indiana up 1-0. There you see the goalkeeper for the Hoosiers, Bethany Copel, making her third start of the season. This is her final match with the Hoosiers. You want to talk about competitive one-on-one -on -one matchups for a spot. That's what Copel and Jamie Gerstenberg, who had been the Hoosier starter much of this season, what they were waging in Bloomington. Copel came into this season as Indiana's all-time leader with 23 career shutouts. Yet, Gerstenberg beat her out, and Gerstenberg put up one of the best seasons of any Big Ten goalkeeper. Wolverines with some shuffling. Meredith Hawkinson and Sammy Woods exit. 
Claire Dawson, the senior. She's played here and there in her senior season. Kaylee Burrow is also in there for the Wolverines. Burrow was a, a spark plug off the bench in that comeback against Rutgers as well. Really brought a lot of energy, a lot of aggression, challenging for 50-50 balls. Uh, she was important to, to getting that comeback rolling. Wolverines outshot 10 to two, trying to generate something there, but the Vicki Jones pass couldn't quite arrive at the destination of Danny Wolf. Throw in here for the Wolverines. Down one nil, thanks to that Ava Akil goal back about 10 minutes ago. Now here's a chipped squirmer that lands right in the arms of Bethany Copel. Michigan's third shot, a modest one, but they are starting to tip the momentum a little bit. They've possessed it in that last third a little bit more than before that first Indiana score. Yeah, a little bit. I, I'd still like to see them possess a little bit more. You know, they were able to, to put Rutgers on the back heel and, and really dominate possession in that second half. And, and Rutgers is a, is a far better team than Indiana. You know, don't, no disrespect to the Hoosiers, but one of those teams is, is going to be potentially a seeded team in the NCAA tournament, and the other one is still looking for its first Big Ten win. So I'm a little surprised that the energy hasn't transferred over uh, from a few days ago until now, Thursday night until Sunday afternoon. And, and again, I think that's something that Jennifer Klein will be a little bit frustrated with, uh, but if they can pop one in here before halftime, it gets them back on level terms. Carly Luker flipped it up there to Izzy Nino. Nothing doing for the Hoosiers. The double figures in shots now is IU. They have this match's lone goal as well. Into the 31st minute in Ann Arbor on a beautiful Sunday afternoon. Kalen to throw in here for Indiana. Headed up by Luker. Vicki Jones shoes it away for Michigan. Back to the thrower, Kalen. And Indiana will recoil. Hoosiers scoring a goal for just the fourth time this season in a fourth match. It's their 11th goal of the season. They are 2-0-1 in the first three. A lot of contact between Margot Ridgeway and Sarah Serta. Serta, the freshman, staying tough for Indiana. But a goal kick coming up here for the Wolverines. Directing traffic here for the Wolverines. The sixth year senior, the Northville, Michigan native. Pinballs its way eventually toward Claire Dawson, the senior. Mike Nino, her final match in the Maize and Blue. Here's Indiana on a push. Akil, who scored moments ago, deflected and tipped out of there by Nino. Indiana's fifth corner coming up, but again, Nino able to shoo away one that certainly looked dangerous off the foot. Yeah, especially because it took a little bit of a, excuse me, it took a little bit of a deflection, as you noted, Brian. And any time you have a redirection, you can catch the goalkeeper wrong-footed, leaning one way instead of the other. So really nice reaction there by Nino to be able uh, to poke that wide. And even though they conceded a corner, it was still a very, very nice reaction save from the Michigan goalkeeper. 12 minutes to play first half. Anna Bennett, the corner here for Indiana. Curls toward Nino. We've seen that a few times from her today. The bobble and then the catch. She's been busy. And now she'll throw ahead toward Anaya League, and the Wolverines will try to push. Yeah, and that's two corners where the Hoosiers have, have really kind of wasted potential deliveries, and I don't know if it's because they're not paying attention to the wind or if they've just been mishit or their, their aiming points are just not, you know, as far away from Nino as they need to be. But regardless, whatever the reasons are, they've had a couple of set pieces where if you move that one, two, two and a half yards to the right, Nino doesn't have the, the license to come out that far and attack it, and it just gives the Hoosiers another opportunity. But instead, you know, the closer you play that ball to the keeper, the, the greater the chance of a wasted opportunity. 
change for Michigan. Taylor Brennan comes in to spell Sarah Bridenstine. Brennan played just 19 minutes against Rutgers on Thursday after a season high 76 at Penn State last weekend. Long throw in here for Michigan and Anaya Lee. 11 minutes to go before halftime. Indiana, the one goal advantage. And easily could be two or three. Six of those shots have been on goal. Indiana churning ahead once again. Olivia Smith, freshman with one of her first relevant touches. Now to Serta, who's been active. Tiptoes her way, tries to shed Tolbert. This one lofted up there. And Nino able to at least deflect it off the goal, but that will set up a corner. That high lofting ball from Indiana and Camille Ham. Yeah, I'm going to be a little critical of Nino on that one. I don't think that ball had any chance of going into the goal. I think it was going to go wide. And if she was maybe a touch more aware of where she was in terms of body position, she could have let that go instead of conceding a corner. And again, not a clean catch either. We've seen that a few times. Here's Bennett on the corner. This one near the goal, a headed attempt by Wampler. And it slithers out the other side of the box. Michigan wanted that to be a goal kick as it was very close to the touchline and they get it. So Nino will have it for the Wolverines soon in this match that does not mean anything in the standings. Wolverines eliminated. They'll do some shuffling with Avery Peters, not often used sophomore from Mason, Michigan coming in along with Jenna Lang, who had those two goals in the win over Rutgers three days ago. She was great. She really was. And, you know, look, we're starting to see some more substitutions, probably more than Jennifer Klein would make in a, in a regular game. You noted there's nothing to play for here. You know, why not give some of the players a little bit of a run that have put in the same amount of hours as everybody else within the program, but they just haven't been out there on match day. So, hey, it's a beautiful day. The game doesn't mean a whole lot, but let's reward them with some minutes when they don't usually get a lot of them. Less than nine minutes to play on that Nino goal kick. You saw the impact of the win. That thing seemingly started to trail back toward Michigan's goal. Deflected on that shot by Ridgeway. Really good defender for Michigan. Indiana still with it just outside the box. Serta sizing things up for the Hoosiers. Trying to add to that one goal advantage. never had a chance on that one. Somehow, Indiana up 1-0, 12 shots. Six on goal has been a pretty solid effort here from the Hoosiers. And there again, you're not going to get a whole lot in the way of distance on some of those goal kicks if you're going from Left to right, Michigan with Hannah Blake into some traffic. A lot of deflections, eventually gets to Wampler, the senior. Michigan wanted a whistle that never came. Now Tolbert will try to settle things down. comes Dawson. Bad pass there, punched back out. Seven minutes before halftime, one nothing Indiana. This is a little bit of a, you know, an unusual lineup for Michigan. I, I would venture to say that this particular group has probably not played any minutes together all season. And so the reason I bring that up is because when you look at what's happening as Michigan tries to build forward, there's there's not a lot of continuity. There doesn't seem to be a lot of ideas about where they want to go from an attacking standpoint. You have Hannah Blake, who's really an attacking midfielder, playing as a center forward, and then you have two wingers 
who don't normally play a ton of minutes and they're trying to manufacture goals without a lot of experience and, and, and knowledge of how each player you know, will fit with the other. Kaylee Burrell hit the post and the crossbar meeting point, that corner. That was a heck of a delivery. Substitutions for Indiana coming in. Izzy Smith and Abby Eiler will enter for Sarah Serta and Olivia Rush. Inside of six minutes to play here in this first half. Indiana, the one nil advantage. On a windy but warm late October afternoon here in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Neither team will go to the Big Ten tournament, so this regular season finale is the end of the road for each of these two programs. Whistle there on Indiana. The Marines try to generate some offense, getting out shot 12 to 3 at this point late first half. Yeah, and I think if you were to make a list of reasons why this season hasn't gone the way that Michigan wants it, I, I would venture to say that the top of that list is not generating enough offense. And so when you look at the number of shots, you know, okay, three shots, it's not the end of the world, but at the same time, if you want to score, your efficiency rate has to be so high when you don't have the number of opportunities that Indiana has created or other teams have created so far this season. So the inability to consistently generate opportunities, high quality scoring opportunities, has made things very, very difficult for the Wolverines going forward and forced them to be a highly efficient team, which they've been unable to do in certain matches this year. And case in point, until that three goal second half surge to stun Rutgers on Thursday, Michigan had just two goals total in Big Ten play. Yeah, and I think, you know, look, again, you don't want to harp too much on individual players, but another big reason why Michigan has underachieved this year is that some of the players that they expected to play big, significant roles or offensive roles with goals and assists just, just haven't come through the way that you'd want with Danny Wolf and Hannah Blake and Sammy Woods not scoring in Big Ten play. So some of it is, is team-wide, not creating the opportunities that you need to, and then some of it also comes down to the individuals not taking advantage of the opportunities that they do have. And, and you know, look, it's, it happens some seasons, and Jennifer Klein will, will put things together again in the off season, and they'll, they'll go again next fall. But, you know, I don't think there's any question that this group probably thinks that there have been glimpses this year of what this team can do, and they'll probably leave this season thinking that there was more on the table that they, they should have gone home with. And, and unfortunately, that's just how it goes. Wampler lets it fly. Reach just outside the box with that wind-aided boot. Trying to clear. And they do to an extent here. Three and a half to play first half. 1-0 Indiana on the Ava Akeel goal. Wolverines trying to generate some offense here in the final stages before halftime. Here's Taylor Brennan. Tries to skip it up ahead toward Jenna Lang. And that reaches the seats in what is a maze out here. sizing things up on this sun-splashed afternoon. Yeah, and that's an example right there of what I was talking about, Brian. Not the pass itself, but you look off the ball, and you have Burl and you have Jenna Lang both checking for the ball to the exact same spot. You never want two players to check to the ball so that they end up within three, four feet of each other. And that just comes from, you know, combinations of not being on the field at the same time and inexperience and all those types of things. But those are the types of, uh, you know, little kinks and things that Jennifer Klein and her staff will point out in film sessions and go over. And, and they'll get them fixed. But again, it's just a minor little issue there that you saw where two players tried to occupy the same space all at once, where if you have your more experienced players in there, your starters, that generally doesn't happen as often. Indiana tried to dial up Ava Keel again. Izzy Nino was able to secure it. She lined that kick a little bit more with the wind certainly being a factor on any of her goal kicks. Now Ridgeway tries to challenge the gusts. Side of two minutes to play first half. Indiana the one goal advantage. Eiler skims it ahead toward a keel. A lot of contact, no whistle. Contact continues on that pass from Burl. Watch out here, a keel in the clear. Zips it in there just wide. 
Not sure if Nino got a piece or if that one with the weird trajectory and the spin. I think she did get just enough. It's a late corner here for Indiana on a bad turnover for Michigan. Yeah, it was, and, and it's unfortunate because it was really nice play by Burrell over here on the tight sideline to get out of trouble, but then Jenna Lang lost the ball in midfield, and, and that shot that Nino deflected away, those are the kind of shots that goalkeepers absolutely hate, the ones that bounce two or three feet in front of them because it's hard to read, and Nino did a nice job of recovering and poking it away, but you know another dangerous opportunity for the Hoosiers. Anna Bennett, the Michigan native, with the corner. Headed out of there by Michigan. Nice defensive. Five seconds here in this first half. Indiana not done yet. Lost it up there in Nino. Smart catch. Good work by Michigan defensively. Can the Wolverines push and get something before halftime? Hannah Blake finds Vicki Jones. Just 20 seconds left. Ten seconds, so the Wolverines will head into the half. Down to the visiting Indiana Hoosiers, 1-0. And Michael, a team that has only scored in four matches all season, including this one, gets to play from ahead in the second half, something they have not done a whole lot of this season. Yeah, I think if, if before the game you had said to Jennifer Klein, at halftime you're going to be down one nothing, you're going to be outshot 13-3, most of that game they were brave they were courageous they were willing to take shots from distance because they knew it could you know potentially test Izzy Nino or create rebound opportunities they won the battle on set pieces to get more opportunities there as well so you know I think it was just a really really strong performance uh, from Erwin Van Benekom's uh, group and you know for Jennifer Klein on the other side lots to clean up in her final halftime talk of the season Indiana pushing the tempo right away here in this second half IU looking for their first Big Ten win, 0-7-2 so far. They are 2-7-7 seven and seven overall. A solid work and goal from Bethany Copel, Indiana's all-time leader in shutouts with 23. She's halfway to number 24 here. It's only her third start of the season after losing the job to Jamie Gerstenberg, who's not playing today. This one into the box, deflected up into the air on that boot from Akeel who had the goal in the first half for Indiana and it settles for a Michigan goal kick so in the first minute Indiana again dictating the terms yeah another warning shot for Michigan there I mean it's look the second half the start of the second half is an opportunity to, to reset the tone to try and shift the momentum to come out as the more aggressive side and we just haven't seen it. I mean, look at Indiana here. Look at the press that they're putting on, the speed, trying to close things down, force Michigan to play negative and play backwards. And now you have Sammy Woods complaining about the lack of a call. And so you can see that, you know, Indiana is bothering Michigan right now. Hannah Blake, who did not start the match beginning this second half for the Wolverines. Now toward Bridenstine. Back over to Hawkinson. She lets it rip. Header attempt from Michigan. Boy, pretty good look but it's a bit wide of the mark there for Lily Farkas and Michigan with one of its better offensive opportunities just as a response to Indiana. Yeah, that was a cross put into a dangerous area and a good attempt by, by Lily Farkas, kind of a lunging, diving attempt at that header, uh, glanced off her head and out of bounds, but better for Michigan there, no question about it. Doesn't look like there's any formational changes for either team. It's still 4-4-3 four, four, for Michigan and the 4-4-2 four, four, diamond uh, for Indiana. Indiana with a takeaway. Sophia Black churns her way into that final third. Up ahead to Akeel. Leaves it back for Olivia Smith. She'll zip it in there. Deflected in front into the arms of Nino. Back and forth we go with offensive opportunities. And Nino secures yet another save. That's that was, her seventh. That was a really, really good cross. I mean, that had the right height to, to make it dangerous where you can get a hip on it, a knee, a foot, whatever you can, right into a dangerous spot at the back post. And if it wasn't for Sarah Bridenstine just kind of nudging the IU player away, that would have been a real problem. Offside there on Michigan, Sammy Woods had some clear space. We're less than three minutes in, and there's been a ton of action with Indiana leading 1-0. 
Those offsides have been a problem for Sammy Woods in the last few games where you and I have been here, Brian. I think she got called for at least three, if not four, in the Northwestern game, and now we see another one here, and it's it's just frustrating because that's the kind of mistake that is very easily correctable. You're not asking a player to do anything physically that they're not capable of. It's, it's a simple matter of looking down the line and seeing where you are relative to the other defenders. So the fact that that problem continues is the type of thing that just kind of you know, it just it just wears on a coach over time because it's a very easily correctable problem. There is a whistle on Michigan and Emily Layson. And you wonder with Sammy Woods, seven goals. She's still in the top ten of the Big Ten, tied for seventh, but none have come in Big Ten play. And you wonder if, kind of like Michigan as an entire group, down the stretch this season of not getting a whole lot to go, you wonder if Woods, it's just mental at times for her without that goal in Big Ten play. Yeah, I mean, that's a very, very valid question. I mean, any time that you are scoring more or less at will in the non-conference and then all of a sudden, week after week after week goes by and you're not able to put the ball in the net uh, as a goal scorer where that's your chief responsibility, that's the reason why you're on scholarship, that can definitely wear on people. There's no question, Brian. So that loft by Wampler for Indiana, an easy catch for Nino. And one of the stars for Indiana, Paige Weber, is down. She is a Michigan native. She is a senior who, like Sammy Woods, has not been able to get a whole lot going offensively after a five-goal season last year. Just won this season, and she's getting looked at by trainer William Means. So both teams will head back to their respective head coaches to get a quick conversation point. For Michigan, Anaya League is a bit slow to walk over to the bench as well league just returning from an injury suffered a couple of weeks ago against Northwestern and that's the last thing you want to see in a match where you know, both groups the season is over after this Hoosiers just hoping for their first Big Ten win Michigan trying to finish above 500 and here's Paige Weber a star for IU down and hurt prepping for this match I know you were impressed with what Weber brought to the table yeah I really was I mean she she was probably the lone Indiana attacker I saw that that had a little a little trick to her she was able to, to rip off a little step over if she needed to she wanted to take players on 1v1 you know again she only came into the, the game I believe with a single goal this season but her expected goals total was three which means that based on the quality of the opportunities that she has had this season she would be expected to score three goals and so that shows you that even though the final product hasn't necessarily been there everything up until that point is good and so there's there's definitely a lot of, of danger in a player like her because all she needs is one of those to go in and all of a sudden the, the tide starts to turn and you know if she's unable to return to this game that would be a big loss for the Hoosiers because as I mentioned she's the one player I thought who was really willing to take defenders on 1v1 and, and cause problems from a technical standpoint so Paige Weber exits Sarah Serta, who was very involved as a freshman in that first half, she will enter here for Indiana. Michigan also bringing in freshman Taylor Brennan. So just shy of five minutes deep into the second half, Indiana maintaining its 1-0 advantage thanks to a first half goal from Ava Akil, her team leading third of the season. Indiana still dominating in the shots category, 14-4. Brenton getting involved early, the deflection toward Layson. And a whistle there on Indiana. And Layson to me looks more comfortable in this role right now when Avery Coletta is not on the field than when she's paired with Coletta because Layson, as we've talked about in prior broadcasts, is a defender by trade. So when you ask her to play in the midfield, just by default, and this is not a critique, this is just how it works in players' minds, she's naturally going to be more defensive because that's what she's played you know, the majority of her career. So when you pair her alongside Coletta, who is also a defensive-minded holding midfielder, it creates situations where the Wolverines don't necessarily have a lot of options going forward. But now that Coletta is on the bench and you have Farkas and Hannah Blake, two very attacking options in there, I think it leaves Layson you know, with a little more freedom and not really feeling like she has to you know, constantly monitor her position in relation to Avery Coletta. And so I think as a sole holding midfielder, she can perform a little bit more comfortably based on what I've seen this season. 
Bridenstein tried to fire one ahead, deflected by Natasha Kim. So Michigan with a throw in just outside of its offensive third. Wolverines down a goal. No whistle there as another Hoosier falls down. That was Olivia Rush. Letting them play here as that one gets past Michigan. Around the touchline, Indiana gets possession back. Yeah, that's a tough one there for Hawkinson because I think the referee kind of, I, I believe, played an advantage. After she got clipped in the ankle, she retained possession, so he let the play continue, which is what you're supposed to do. But unfortunately for Hawkinson, her next touch was an overhit pass that went out of bounds. Indiana will reset to the goalkeeper, Bethany Copel playing in front of some friends and family, the Novi native, her final match with the Hoosiers. She enrolled in the spring semester of 2017. It's so odd with some of the COVID years, of course, an injury season for Copel last year. You have some lengthy careers, case in point on Michigan's side. The Wolverines have now the all-time leader in matches. Meredith Hawkinson playing her 98. That might never be touched. Yeah, and what's what's interesting too is is to see what the players do with that eligibility from an academic standpoint. Because look, you know, a lot of these players are not going to go on to play professionally. And I remember I was watching a video online recently of a college football player who, for various reasons, COVID included, a lot of the same things you were just talking about, is in his seventh or eighth year of eligibility wow. somehow because of multiple medical red shirts. And anyway, they were asking him like, "What have you been doing?" And he said, "Well, I'm I'm going to finish my second master's degree." by the time I leave. So this is a guy who, you know, comes in, gets an undergraduate degree, and is going to walk away with two masters. And you look at a player like Copel, who I'm sure has is going to have at least one master's degree, if not more than one, just based on the amount of time she's been in school. And so, you know, it's an opportunity to play more soccer games, sure, but it's also a better chance to set yourself up for later in your life. Wood sizing things up. Couldn't fire to head to Wolf. It looked like she was offside. Wood smartly maintained it. And some miscommunication. Wolverines lose it. Indiana on the push. Here's Sarah Serta. She came in for the injured Paige Weber. And Serta's probably been their second best player today. I mean, she's she's technical as well. I mean, that's a nice shield right there with her body. Serta going to work against Taylor Brennan, freshman on freshman. And Brennan forced her to the touchline. And that will be a Michigan goal kick. Good defense there and a, a fun matchup as you look to the future for both of these programs I think both have to be pretty pleased with the freshmen soon to be sophomores they have around both yeah. Bloomington and Ann Arbor yeah I would agree and the tricky part though is that you still don't know which players are going to use their COVID year and which ones aren't sure. because that's a decision that doesn't have to be made right now and, and frankly at least based on you know calendar rules it can be made quite late um, it can be made all the way up until basically the start of next season for a player to be able to come back. So from a roster building standpoint, you hear about this more in football and basketball because they're the most popular sports in college, but it's in all levels right now where you're not really sure what your team is going to look like, who you need to target in the portal. But yes, I agree that there are some bright spots uh, in the freshman and sophomore classes on both sides that we're getting to see uh, today, and they're gaining extra opportunities here in this game that, you know, as we've talked about, doesn't have any playoff implications. Foul on Sophia Black. Now Bridenstine pushes it ahead. And case in point on those lengthy time frames to make decisions, we referenced Meredith Hawkinson. She did not decide until after last season to return for this season. And the incoming freshman and the current freshman, they don't have that COVID year. It's back to four. This isn't an all-encompassing type of a deal on a roster. Yeah, no doubt about it. When I was coaching at Central Connecticut the year after I left, um, you know, in that following summer, I was working a camp and, and one of my former players was at the camp as well. And I was talking to the head coach after I left and he said, yeah, you know, let her know that if she wants to come back, we have a spot for her all the way up until the start of the season. You know, wow. all she has to do is be able to enroll in classes academically and she can come back. So it can really, I mean, you're talking about potentially not knowing if it's not gonna be 10 or 12 players, but one or two that could drastically change a team depending on the caliber of their play that you don't know if they're coming back till August but more than 10 minutes into this second half here in Ann Arbor. Indiana maintaining the 1-0 advantage. And an offside called there as Ava Keel, the difference maker in this one with the lone goal, she was too far. 
referee here is going to have a little conversation with Sammy Woods and Olivia Smith because a, a moment or two earlier there was a challenge for the ball and they got a little tangled up and Sammy Woods you know threw a little bit of a soft elbow and Smith kind of got tangled up with her again and so it was definitely going both ways but the referee said something to them at the time and then credit to him you know it's good officiating to let the play go not break it up when it's happening but then when there is a natural stoppage to come back and address his concern which he did right there. So Bridenstine's free kick tries to flip the field a little bit. Wolverines just one shot here in the second half, only had three in the first half when they were outshot significantly 13 to three. Indiana's had the momentum. They have the one nil lead. Uh, now 11 minutes into this second half and the Hoosiers now get it back. Serta as active as ever, up to a keel. Settles things, reverses course, deflected out there by Michigan. It was Bridenstine, and that one well over the goal for Indiana. So a reset here on a goal kick for Michigan. You know, I spent a minute or two earlier talking about the differences in the formation when Layson and Coletta are playing alongside each other versus when, you know, Hannah Blake and Lily Farkas are both up top. And, and the difference now is that you kind of have the same problem in reverse where Lily Farkas and Hannah Blake are very, very similar players. They want to occupy the same type of positions. So now you have situations where both of them want to play so far forward that there's huge gaps between the attacking midfielders and Emily Layson, and there's not as much link-up play. Ideally, you'd like to have three kinds of midfielders in a midfield three. You'd like to have one player that's very defensive, one player that's more attacking, and then one that's called sort of a box-to-box -box midfielder, which is just your workhorse, your engine that is willing to go up and down, up and down, up and down, but doesn't necessarily specialize in one particular area. 12 minutes into this second half, Indiana, the one nil advantage. Both these sides playing their final matches of the season. Neither will qualify for the 18 Big Ten Tournament, which starts next weekend on campus sites. Scramble for possession there. Danny Wolf couldn't jar it loose. Now Wolf comes up with it. Michigan trying to generate some offense. Had a quick opportunity early in the second half. Nothing since. Farkas with some crafty work. Able to find Woods just outside the box. Some open space, curls it way too long over Hawkinson, and a goal kick coming up here for Indiana. No, it'll be a throw-in. That thing hugged the line. So it will be a throw-in for the Hoosiers, length of the pitch to go. Really nice quick feet there from Lily Farkas, as you noted, just kind of zigzagging her way between a couple of defenders and then freeing Sammy Woods down the sideline for a cross. But, you know, as we've seen many times this season, the final piece of that execution isn't there. And, and Sammy Woods had, you know, the wrong weight on her cross. It was well over hit and, and didn't give anybody uh, in a white uniform a chance inside the penalty area. Akeel, a little bit too much of a bump on Bridenstine. Elects to recoil that pass back toward Tamia Tolbert. Celebrating her 20th birthday here this afternoon, the regular season finale. Nice job by Woods to keep it in. Brennan now leaves it for Woods. She'll zigzag her way, touches it ahead, and that one was to no one in particular. Mistake from Hannah Blake, the senior. Wolverines have possession back, but there was something working there, and Blake just couldn't continue it. Yeah, I, I, honestly, I don't know what Blake was trying to do there or who she was trying to play that pass to. It was just a, a waste of an opportunity. Akeel one-on-one against Ridgeway, and the fifth-year senior for the Wolverines gets it back to Izzy Nino, the sixth-year goalkeeper who has been quite busy this afternoon. Nino, six saves. She did give up that goal to Akeel in the first half. The lone goal of the match. Smart catch there from Nino. Wolverines... Urgency starting to build a little bit here. Down a goal. A little bit more than 30 minutes to play here on a gorgeous Sunday in Ann Arbor. It better be building, Brian. I mean, they got 30 minutes left in their season, and they're losing to a team that's winless. If that doesn't light a fire under you to get you to play better, I don't know what will. Bridenstine up ahead, eyeing Woods, headed out of there well by Wampler. To Wolf. Throws it back out toward Bridenstine. Laser beam ahead. Once again, Wampler getting involved. Heads it up twice. Woods trying to tussle for Michigan. A lot of contact, no whistle and clear from Indiana. 
Yeah, nice job by Indiana's back line to contest that in the, in the air and make sure that there were plenty of defenders around the ball so that any miscues, there were other options to clear it away. It was, it was good team defending there by the Hoosiers. Yeah, something Indiana is known for. They've only won two matches this season, but haven't given up a ton of goals either. Jamie Gerstenberg, 10 goals allowed the starter for Indiana in 14 matches. And Bethany Kopel has been just as good as the backup. Now Bridenstine up ahead toward Woods. Got too much on that one. And maybe the commotion from Camille Ham on Woods' strike altered things a little bit. Goal kick Indiana. I think that was probably the best passing sequence we've seen by Michigan in the final third because you had a beautiful through ball from Merrick, excuse me, from Meredith Hawkinson that played in Sarah Bridenstine down the right sideline. And then Bridenstine had the proper weight on her cross to give Sammy Woods an opportunity. Sammy goes for the first time finish, but just skies it over the bar. Now Blake. Good defense from Zoe Tiger, the junior from New Jersey for Indiana. Wolverines with a couple of opportunities. Still looking for their first goal, down one, inside of 30 minutes to play in the regular season finale. And they are boosted a little bit with Avery Coletta back in. The sophomore replaced Emily Lason on that last stoppage. Nice deflection, Farkas. But Copel able to secure it in goal for Indiana. But that block by Farkas, that's the kind of thing that can fire up a team, right? Because it's one player sacrificing their body, making an effort, blocking a shot, and now all of a sudden the crowd starts chanting a couple of seconds later, just sort of thanking, you know, Farkas for the effort that she puts in. And, you know, it's something like that that can get a, get a team rolling when you need a break. Simply a reset there as Michigan had some miscommunication. Danny Wolf was frozen. And that pass went easily to Copel, who has to deal with the win now after the Wolverines and Hoosiers flip sides. Pretty good gusts. And as you see, I mean, that doesn't get anywhere close to the midline. If you get any air on a ball, it's going to retreat back a little bit. That's about the third or fourth time that Sammy Woods has brought a ball out of the air with an unbelievable first touch. She just cushions it so well. It's not an easy skill at all, and she makes it look so easy but one thing I will say to watch is that after that last sequence there was a little bit of jawing between her and Danny Wolf and, and that's kind of some of the frustration that I think you're seeing in this team where Sammy was yelling at Danny Danny had her hands up not sure what Sammy wanted her to do so you know that's what happens to a team when the expectations are really really high and things don't go the way that you want and you have to try and guard against that as much as you can both as a group of players and a coaching staff Blake ahead toward Woods headed away by Ham very close to that goal or to that corner. We will see if it is a throw in or a corner kick. It looks to be a throw in for Michigan, and it is. So Taylor Brennan to loft it in here for the Wolverines. As Callie Burrell will come in for Michigan, replacing Danny Wolf. Brennan chucks it toward Burrow. This one, Woods, flicks it up ahead, eyeing Hawkinson to no avail. Great defensive header there by Kalen to just flick that out of play, knowing that she had somebody closing down on the backside there. Uh, just really, really nice defensive header to clear things away. Almost 20 minutes into this second half, Indiana still a 1-0 edge. They're out shooting. Michigan 15 to 6. Just the fourth match all season. Indiana has scored. They have only 11 goals all year, but they found the net with an Ava Akil goal in the first half. And now they're eyeing their first Big Ten win, while Michigan hopes to finish above 500 overall if they can rally and win this finale here in Southeast Michigan. Tasha Kim had it for a moment. Now Akil. Michigan pressuring here pretty much wherever with the minutes quickly dwindling down. Now Ham, who's been involved a lot, tried to slide it toward Bennett, who's able to get it. She let it go through her legs. That one deflected and a corner coming up for Indiana. Well done by Bennett all around. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that was an opportunity where she essentially 
creates a corner out of nothing or what should have been nothing. And, and any time you can do that and just give yourself an extra dead ball opportunity, set piece opportunity as a team, it's huge. And Bennett, she will be the one to boot it in here for the Hoosiers. Corner number eight for IU. Michigan has just one. Indiana trying to add to this one goal advantage. Past the goal, headed up there, still in danger. And Nino had it for a moment. It served in there, somehow saved by Bridenstine on the Akeel shot. How in the world did Michigan prevent that goal from going in? Well, Izzy Nino needs to, oh, well, it looks like they're going to take a look at this. The official just made the signal for VAR to take a look and see if that ball crossed the line. But Izzy Nino needs to write a thank you note to Sarah Bridenstine because that was so poorly played from Nino's point of view. She got caught in no man's land on the initial cross, and then instead of retreating to her line and just protecting it, she kept staying out near the top of the six-yard box just flailing, trying to get her hands on it. And if Bridenstine does not clear that out, that is 100% on Izzy Nino for poor goalkeeping. So like I said, she needs to write a thank you note for Bridenstine. And not only that, but just credit for Bridenstine for being smart enough to realize that her goalkeeper was off the line and that you essentially have to become the de facto goalkeeper back there. We'll see what comes of this review, Brian. It's really hard to tell from our angle. Again, for those watching, the ball has to be completely over the line. Even if one one hundredth of an inch of the ball is over, excuse me, is still on the line, above the line, it is not a goal. 100% of the ball has to be over the line in order for it to count. So we'll see what the referee says. Yeah, Alex Beeler immediately called for it once the true scoring opportunity for Indiana went away. And Bridenstine's entire body was outside when she made contact. The question is, how far did that left leg have to go back in order to prevent that from going in? But a, a pretty impressive attempt by Akil looking for her second goal. And if this ends up holding as a defensive stop, a bonus save, if you will, for Michigan, then my goodness, what an effort from Bridenstine playing her tail off the junior from Rochester, Michigan, who has been such an important piece to this Michigan team. No question. I, I was actually going to mention this earlier that I, I wanted to give her a tip of the cap for the way that she's played this season because I remember early in the year I was very, very concerned about what she would be able to do it right back. I thought that if there was going to be, excuse me, a glaring weakness on this back line, this reconstructed back line, that it might be Bridenstine because I wasn't impressed with what I saw in the two exhibition games. But she has completely proved me wrong and played a tremendous season uh, for the Wolverines and will be an important player for them moving forward. The referee just had a little conference here with Jennifer Klein, and it appears that it, he has said no goal. No goal. Wow. How about that play from Sarah Bridenstine? And that was kind of what it looked like from here, but it's impossible to tell from this angle. And that is a match-saving effort from Sarah Bridenstine, and there wasn't a whole lot of protest from Erwin Van Benekom, the fourth-year Hoosiers head coach. No, there wasn't, and you could see, you could sort of read his lips from where we were, and he said, how close, and the referee went like this and <laughs> held his fingers about an inch apart. So again, that goes back to my point, that 100% of the ball has to be over the line, and if it was an inch, an inch and a half, whatever it was, that was enough for Sarah Bridenstine to keep things out of the net. And you talked about what that would have done, uh, excuse me, in terms of a potential match-saving opportunity for Michigan. How about we go the other way? Indiana with a 2-0 lead, potentially. That completely changes the tenor of this game and gives them something to sit back and protect. And that wind-aided goal kick from Izzy Nino gets Michigan on the outskirts of the box. But good defense. A retreat that was efficient from Indiana sets up Bethany Copel to secure it. We'll see what Michigan can do from that. They had one little spark in the second half against Rutgers on Thursday, and it resulted in a three-goal avalanche to stun the nationally ranked Scarlet Knights. Do they have something in them here against the, in Big Ten play, winless Indiana Hoosiers? Well, that won't do it. Coletta too long on that pass toward the hero for now, Sarah Bridenstine. We are midway through this second half. Indiana up 1-0. Been a fun one. Indiana out shooting the Wolverines 16 to six. They have had the advantage in this one, but can that Bridenstein defensive effort spark something in a Wolverines group just trying to salvage an above 500 season one year after getting to the Elite Eight in the NCAA tournament? 
Yeah, while you were going through that, Brian, I was pulling up some stats here because I looked across at the scoreboard and I saw the 16 shots for Indiana, and I thought to myself, that seems like a really high number relative to what Michigan generally concedes in a game. And sure enough, the Wolverines are allowing 11 and a half shots a game so far this season and they've given up 16 and there's still 22 minutes and change to go in this one and that shows you just really what the Hoosiers have done offensively and a lot of changes here for Michigan including in goal Wolverines bring in Catherine McElroy who is a senior and Izzy Nino gets a fist bump from her head coach Jennifer Klein Nino has been here longer than Klein has she waited she continued to train. She got an opportunity all season long to start, and it does not end the way that Nino and the Wolverines wanted, but you want to talk about sticking with it, staying, trying to finally get out there and compete. That's Izzy Nino, and yeah, it wasn't the best finish of the season for her, but she did play really well at times here this afternoon. Yeah, she did, and you could see some of the emotion on her face as she came off the field. You know, I couldn't tell if the, the tears were falling, but she was definitely, you know, a little choked up and things like that because, you know, like we talked about earlier, the amount of time that somebody would have put in as a, as a Division One athlete for six years, whether you're playing or not, you're still there for the same amount of time, whether you're on the field or whether you're on the bench or whatever the case may be. So she's invested a significant portion of her, of her life, really. I mean, you're talking about 25% of her life probably, if not more to this Michigan program and so for her to stick around and get the opportunity is great and to play well for most of this season or at least large parts of this season is, is a credit to her and her development and like you said she went out with a with a stellar performance so far today with that you know one exception on the play where Bridenstine bailed her out but other than that she's played very very well and made some excellent saves for Michigan. We also saw Meredith Hawkinson exit we'll see if that's the end of her career in her 98th match she was replaced by Jenna Lang, who had the two huge second-half goals to even and then to overtake Rutgers back on Thursday. It's a delicate balance, really. You know, and to be honest, I'm kind of surprised that Jennifer Klein made those subs this early. You know, I'm, I'm totally fine with trying to get people on the field for the last game. I think it's important. I remember, you know, in the, in the game that I coached in the NCAA tournament, we were down 3 nothing in the final five minutes, and we tried to get literally every single player on the bench into the game to be able to say that they played in the NCAA tournament. And But this game is still winnable, right? And, like, it's way better to end your season with a win than it is a loss. So I would have thought that if Jennifer Klein wants to make those moves, maybe she does it in the last two, three, four minutes if you're still down. But to do it this early surprises me a little because I, I kind of think that some of these players she's taking off would want to make another push at it and see if they can, you know, turn this around and, and end their careers with a win. And that's why the reaction of Klein with Nino felt like, oh, yeah, that's it for her. I, I didn't see that as much with Hawkinson, so we'll see – with 20 minutes to play if she might come back into this one with Indiana leading just one to nil. Very possible. We've seen players like Hawkinson and Lily Farkas take you know brief little interludes in the second half and then come on for the final stretch. So very, very possible there, no doubt. Here's Sammy Wood. She's still out there. Tried to lead Burrell. Couldn't do it. Goal kick Indiana. And that's been the story of Michigan and Big Ten play, just unable to create some of those prime chances there the Wolverines unable to do so as Indiana brings in Jordan Levy to replace Sarah Serta and Serta exits with a lot to build off from this match for her incoming sophomore season so 19 minutes exactly to play Indiana with a first half goal that's been it out shooting the Wolverines 16 to 6 Sammy Wood saves it along the touchline. That finds its way to Lily Farkas. Now Coletta. She'll be back for her junior season next year. Now some dancing from Bridenstein. That one near the crossbar. Deflected up into the air by Copel. That was a pass. It looked like turned into almost a shot. Michigan a throw in coming up. Yeah, nifty footwork there from Bridenstine, like you pointed out, Brian. A couple of step overs. She, she bought herself a yard and played in a cross, and it was deflected away. But again, good play from Bridenstine, who's been one of their better players all season. Farkas tried to thread the needle to no avail. Good clear from Natasha Kim. And some contact right near Michigan's fifth year head coach, Jennifer Klein. Anna Bennett, a little slow to get up there for Indiana. Looks like 
her and Farkas and, and Lily Farkas now that I see it is limping a bit too. It was a it was a pretty heavy collision between the two of them. Neither one really looking for a foul, so that kind of tells you it was 50-50 in nature, but a sore one nonetheless. Sophia Black re-enters for Indiana. 1-0 here. Hoosiers hoping to win their lone Big Ten match in their final Big Ten match. Michigan trying to rally like they did on Thursday against a ranked Rutgers group. A lot of commotion. Coletta still playing hard. But it somehow finds its way to Jordan Levy, who just checked in. A little too strong on that touch ahead toward Ava Keel as the lone goal in this match. And here's an opportunity for Catherine McElroy, who, from all accounts from Coach Klein, she really pushed Izzy Nino. She's also trying to get some playing time this year and wasn't able to get a whole lot. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, goalkeeper's that one position, right, where you just don't want to make any substitutions unless you absolutely have to. Fatigue is almost never a factor at that position. So barring injury, you're going to ride with your number one as long as you can. It's like a quarterback, essentially. And so it's a tough position, and, and it's, it's difficult to be lower on the pecking order than you'd want because you know that your playing time is basically limited to blowouts in one direction or the other. Um, and so it's good to see – you know, players get a chance, even if it is in a game that doesn't mean a whole lot because it rewards some of that effort that they've put in uh, behind the scenes. Good news here is Paige Weber, who exited earlier in the half due to injury, she re-enters, replacing Ava Akil. So that is great news for Indiana. One of their best players back out there. And again, in the final game of the season, you just want to make sure everybody leaves healthy. Sure. Michigan needing to rally. They've got less than 16 minutes with which to work. Being outshot by 10. Lone goal in the first half for Indiana. Brennan hustles over to secure that pass from Tolbert. Now Farkas. She'll zing it in there. Indiana, they push the tempo right back. How about that effort from Ridgeway? She finds Bridenstine. Head up, curls back. Smartly resets. Here's Woods to no one in particular. But it results in Farkas coming up with it. 15 minutes to play. Good defense from Camille Ham, she's been solid here for an Indiana Hoosiers team that they are just so tough defensively. Yeah, they really are, and I'd be curious to see or or take a look at what the the postseason awards look like in terms of whether you know any Indiana defenders or certainly their goalkeeper Jamie Gerstenberg get any recognition because you might look at their record and say, well, they're 0-7 and 2 coming into tonight in Big Ten play, but. That would certainly be um, a, a, a generalization that is unfair to what they've shown on the defensive end of the pitch. It's really just the offensive side where they've fallen short. So, as we talked about earlier, Meredith Hawkinson is back in. Sammy Woods exits. We'll see if that's the end of her junior season. Wolverines have it with Farkas. Down a goal. Needing something here in the regular season finale. Bridenstein over to Hawkinson. Bridenstine gets it back, lasers it in. Just a bit over the head of the goalkeeper, Copel. Nice save by Brennan, or was it? No. We've seen Bridenstine have some pretty dangerous balls in the way of Copel from outside the box or just inside. Uh, still nothing, though, for Michigan inside of 14 minutes to go. Yeah, it's interesting because in, in modern soccer over the last... I don't know, 10 or 15 years, the importance of attacking fullbacks has, has really risen. You know, you look at some of the best players in the world now, and a lot of them are influencing games on the offensive end from wide defensive positions just because of their ability to get forward, to whip in crosses, to take on players 1v1. And so in that respect, you know, Bridenstine represents the perfect modern fullback who can play both sides of the field. After a tussle, the Hoosiers had it for a moment. A lot of contact there. Coletta battling with Levy. She's tough. 
Coletta took a, a shot to the nose against Rutgers and had a bloody nose and spent all of 12 seconds on the sideline to get it plugged up before she came right back in while it was still, you know, bleeding. So she she's not going to back down. Last touch by Dawson for Michigan. So Ham will throw it in. And if you're Indiana, up 1-0. No need to rush things here. IU with Olivia Rush. She'll circle back. Find the thrower, Ham. She lost it up ahead. Look out here. McElroy wasn't quite sure to completely crash the party or stay back. Was closest to Weber, but nothing doing for the Hoosiers. Approaching 12 minutes to play. Indiana up a goal. Yeah, and they're fine with this, Brian. Like you talked about, it's 12 minutes to go. It's a little too early to start, you know, completely trying to run out the clock. But again, the longer they possess, that's fine with them, you know. And and it's it's a situation where we've talked about this in other games. Uh, learning how to close out wins is a skill for a team. You have to know what times to, you know, possess the ball in areas of the field that are less dangerous, like the the attacking corner areas and, and how long you can keep it there, you know, when to make substitutions, when to foul, all those types of things. So, you know, you wonder for a team like Indiana that has only won two games this year, this is probably an unfamiliar spot for them. They probably haven't had a lot of one-goal leads with 11 minutes left. So let's see how they handle it. Wampler has de uh, delivered several good balls here from this type of spot on the field. Another one into the box, headed out of there well by Michigan. Yeah, Ridgeway really flicked that away nicely and out of danger. But that foul on Brennan moments ago cost Michigan about a half minute. No question, and that's the thing. Like it might seem innocuous, a foul from 40 minutes or 40 yards away. Excuse me, but it's the time it takes to get the player that's going to kick the ball to that side of the field. A lot of times you'll see teams signal and have somebody who's playing on the left side come all the way over to the right just to buy more time, and it's a few seconds here and a few seconds there and all of a sudden you've milked half a minute or a minute off the clock from something that's basically irrelevant to the game. Burrell out. Danny Wolf, the senior from West Bloomfield, not too far away from Ann Arbor. She's back in there for the final 10 and a half minutes of her career. Wolverines will have a throw in around the midline. Down a goal here. We should mention that we haven't seen Casey Lawrence today, Brian. You know, Casey Lawrence, you know, there's this program called Instat that grades all of um, college soccer games, similar to pro football focus for any NFL fans out there. And Casey Lawrence graded out the highest of any Michigan player in that win over Rutgers because of her work as a wingback, both offensively and defensively. She had a pair of assists in that game, and, and she usually occupies that left side. We have not seen her today. She was wearing a cast on her wrist in that Rutgers game, but that's not necessarily new. She's worn that for a couple games. Uh, we were told by a, a spokesman for the, for the women's program that she was riding an exercise bike before the game, but there was no definitive information about her injury. But nonetheless, that, that's a key attacking player for this Wolverine squad that hasn't been out there, Brian. Yeah, and Michigan officially eliminated back on Thursday. They still beat Rutgers, but the Minnesota win over Purdue ended the Wolverines' chances. And you wonder if, because of that, no need to push it with Lawrence, who is just a junior. Nice work defensively there to head that one out. Nine minutes to play here. Indiana up 1-0. And not really a surprise. When in doubt, just reset things for the Hoosiers. Michigan, they have to play with big time tempo here. Just three shots in the second half. Yeah, you can hear the Michigan coaches down on the sideline imploring their team to get higher up the field, throw bodies forward. Farkas lets it rip. Nice save from Copel. Just her second of the match. Michigan there with a little up-tempo effort. Their seventh shot, and that's their first on goal. Yeah, I mean, we've seen Farkas this year. She's probably their best long-range shooter in terms of what she can do from outside the box. And that was another quality hit there, but well held by Copel in the net. No rebound opportunities there. And again, she kills a few more seconds by holding the ball before finally punting it away. And now all of a sudden, the ball is as far away from Michigan's net as they could possibly have it. And they're having to go the full length of the field if they want to try and find an equalizer. Everything is buying a little bit more time for Indiana. And there's the saying in soccer, anywhere will do. 
And that's kind of what it is for Indiana right now. Anywhere away from their goal is fine with them. And there you see a throw in, now a substitution inside of eight minutes to play. Indiana still with that Ava Akeel goal that's holding up here in the regular season finale. Good ball there by Claire Dawson just to get it out toward the midline, Michigan. Accelerating a bit more, Brennan from the shadows. Over to Dawson, the senior. Doesn't play a whole lot, getting some run time here in the final match of the season. To Farkas, some crafty work. Tried to slide it in, it's booted out of there. A corner coming up for Michigan. Just the Wolverines second with seven minutes to play. Yeah, I mean, that's really good play by Lily Farkas, and I don't want to take anything away from that. But what I don't understand is why Michigan is keeping two defenders near the midway line. There's no Indiana player within 30 yards of Michigan's center backs. And whether you lose 2 nothing, or you try and tie it 1-1 by throwing, body forwards, it makes, excuse me, throwing bodies forward, it makes no difference. So why are you positioning your defenders so deep? It, to me, it just, it's senseless, and I don't understand it. Both center backs should be playing very high up the field trying to help out. Bridenstine was way low on that corner, but Michigan got a pretty quick reset. Danny Wolf couldn't get that header to go. So the better chance comes well after the corner, but still nothing for the Wolverines. Down a goal. No, it was a great job by Danny Wolf to attack that ball and get ahead on it. It just unfortunately went wide. Um, and you see another little dose of gamesmanship there from Indiana because once you get to five minutes, the clock will stop if the team that's winning makes a substitution. So what does Indiana coach uh, Erwin Van Bennekom do? He, he substitutes with six minutes remaining because it will buy time before the clock stoppage goes into effect. Even though Indiana hasn't been in many of these situations, just two wins all season, you know you coach it up, you drill it into your players throughout the season. Bridenstine curls one. Check that, that was Hannah Blake with five and a half to play. Now Dawson, lofted ahead by Bridenstine. Nothing doing there. Farkas trying to save it, a lot of contact. And the Wolverines have a corner. And we should remind the viewers, Brian, no overtime in yep. college soccer, a rule change this year. So if it ends, uh, if Michigan is e able to equalize and it ends 1-1 after the end of 90 minutes, that's it. It's a 1-1 draw to close out the season. Bridenstine lifts her hand, lets it fly. This one well over the goal. Headed up into the air by Ridgeway, still in the box, and cleared out of there by Indiana and Sophia Black. Yeah, I think that was an example where Bridenstine had one of the issues that Indiana had in the first half, not adjusting to the wind there, but it was a great job by Ridgeway to nod that back into play. Unfortunately, there was nobody to crash on the second ball. Michigan with a couple of corners in succession after just one before that in a match that is now more than 85 minutes old. That's a pretty yep. obvious tug from Meredith Hawkinson And that'll there. be a yellow card. No doubt about it. So Hawkinson carded there. And I, that's a tough one because theoretically there's reason to take that foul right if you feel like the opponent has a fast break opportunity or a transition on a counterattack the other way there's nothing wrong with committing that tactical foul there um, but what it does now is it just allows Indiana to throw more bodies forward to slow things down again so even though the clock is stopped now they have an opportunity to, to you know turn this into a scoring chance potentially if they choose to throw one into the box eventually here oh what a split how about that from Levy still possessing over toward Black, couldn't get anything off, now trying to force a corner. Play continues, and now a Michigan throw into the Wolverines dodge a bullet there, and the card from Hawkinson benefits Michigan. It does, in that situation it definitely did. That was certainly a rock and hard place type of a circumstance for a Wolverines team that's in that same spot on the scoreboard. Down one nil, but a little bit of momentum here. And now Indiana's caught with those bodies too far forward that we just talked about. Bridenstine lofts it ahead. And a great save from Copel with Hawkinson streaking in, playing in her 98th match as a Wolverine. 
Copel prevents Hawkinson from a shot. Yeah, and she caught that ball at 337, and now she punts it at 323. So there's 14 seconds milked off the clock just from one catch by the goalkeeper. Wolverines now with eight overall shots. That was their second on goal, and both have been right at the keeper, Copel. Wolverines had three second half goals to stun nationally ranked Rutgers back on Thursday. They need some real magic here just to force a draw against an Indiana team that has not won a Big Ten match. Hawkinson collided there with Wampler. No whistle. Indiana has it back. But again, this is what I'm talking about. If you're Michigan, why have two defenders 20 to 30 yards on your own half of the field? It's just wasting bodies that you could throw forward to try and get an equalizer. Farkas, a deflected shot. And there's Copel. That thing would have been wide. But Copel slowing things down. Caught it around 2.30 on the clock. And she did pretty much everything you could do there, bleeding another 13 seconds. Yeah, and a lot of times in those situations, you'll see a, a goalkeeper willing to take a yellow card, yep. hold it as long as possible until the referee says no more because every goalkeeper knows that no referee wants to give a red card to a goalkeeper for holding the ball too long. So you can get away with it two, three, four times because no referee wants to change the game that drastically. 1-0 Indiana. Inside of two minutes left. Can Michigan get one more big-time shot off to Dawson playing in her last match with the Wolverines? Tangled up there. How about the effort from Ham, who has been all over the place here today? Yeah, this is impressive team defending by Indiana, right? You have 10 players counting the goalkeeper behind the ball with only Jordan Levy up top, and they're just really doing a nice job. Like I said, anywhere will do. Under 90 seconds to go, Brian. A lot of commotion. Finally, the throw in from Layson chucked it up ahead. Now to Blake, the senior from New Zealand. Now Ridgeway up ahead. That was destined for Hawkinson. But Indiana shoes it away again. But right now, like, why do you need three defenders back against one IU attacker? Put two of those players in the box, and if you go 1v1 and you lose 2 nothing, who cares? At least you tried. I just think this is way too cautious for the last game of the season when you're down a goal. Hawkinson to Coletta inside of a minute. Tried to whip it in there, deflected up by Tiger, and it's to the goalkeeper, Copel, who will slow things down. 40 seconds remaining. Yeah, I mean, this is the last time I'm going to make this point, but this is 40 seconds left in your season, and Avery Coletta takes a shot from outside the box, and there were zero, zero Michigan attackers inside the box trying to get a rebound, trying to deflect it, whatever the case may be. I, I just don't understand. You have to throw caution to the wind and send everybody but your goalkeeper forward. Try and get an equalizer. A 2 nothing loss means nothing, but a 1-1 draw is much better. Just 15 seconds. A lot of waiting. Michigan's hoping for a throw-in. Everyone's just standing around. Bridenstine will simply throw it away. Referee stopped the clock. With eight seconds left, but that cost Michigan at least 10 seconds. Can they get one more shot off? Here's Wolf. Over to Blake. Let's it fly. Ball game over. How about Bethany Copel, the all time Indiana shutout leader? capping number 24 near her hometown of Novi. She was brilliant down the stretch. Indiana's defense was awesome throughout, and the Hoosiers secured.